The last budget principle, have a plan for the global meltdown. And when we get one, we will let you know. Moving on to the other stuff. Okay, this is where it really gets good. This is our projection. We're looking at 2011, 2012, and 2013, as well as 2010. 2010's our problem, right? No, 2011, 12, and 13 are even bigger problems. We've walked into this situation when I came in the door 2008. In fact, yes, of course, the sky did fall when Penny walked in. That's how I got the name Penny. I was always heading Penny, the sky is falling. Well, it did. <laughs> All right, in 2008, I walked in, we had to immediately cut $10 million. The economy hadn't quite started to falter, but in all of my principal learning about budgets, I said, oh my gosh, we're living a little outside of our means. We said, yes, we know we want to provide services to, to the community. We don't want to cut them. We're doing everything we possibly can to stay within a balanced budget. So we did cut the budget. Council was right there, $10 million we were able to take out that year with very little service impact to the community. However, 2008, nine got worse. We added another $41 million to that ongoing shortfall that we had. So in that $41 million on top of a $10 million, $51 million, and then we go up to 2010 and we're looking at another $37.9 million. So $37.9 million on top of $41 million on top of $10 million is how much? A billion billion. It's a lot of money. We're short. So when we're looking at 2011, 2012, and 2013, we're looking at anywhere between 10 and 20 million dollar shortfall in each of those three years. So you add that on top of the other, and all of a sudden, we really are in a crisis that is far beyond what anyone could have potentially predicted. And because of that ratchet down component, we will not recover. We may see some slight recovery over time, but we will not recover. Okay, it gets better. When we went to council for 2010, because that's what we're here for today, we talked about 2010, we set up all these principles of things that in all my naivete, I thought, oh wow, this is cool, we can do it. We said, we don't want people that are poor to be impacted, because governments are in fact in business to provide those services that either the business cannot, will not, or that don't make sense for them to provide. Services for our homeless tend to be in that way. Services for low income families tends to be that way. So that's what cities do. So we looked at all of these principles and said, these are great principles. This is what we live for. This is what we're trained for. This is why we donate millions of hours as council members to serve the city. But guess what? We couldn't do it. What we found was in 2010 alone, we had a $37.9 million gap, which of course we all know and acknowledge includes a $9.1 million package for wages, which of course no one ever expected us to do. But as part of the policies, we're good people. We follow policy. That's what we we're supposed to do. But we take it out. Council knows that we were going to take it out. We have to take it out, plus a, bunch, a whole lot of bunch of other things. We'll go into those in a minute. Composition of a deficit. We've got our budget. We said we know we have $228.3 million worth of requirements, but we have unavoidables, things that don't crop up every year or that may crop up cumulatively, such as pensions, for example. We all know when the economy falters, pension costs go up because the market went down. So we have to fund those. Is it city employees' fault? No, it is not. It's a public policy that we made years ago in commitment to say people who are dying for the jobs, people who put their lives out on the line, that go out on the streets at 2 a.m. when the rest of us are warm and cozy in our beds and go out and maintain trucks that broke, have broken down or gotten hit in order to snow plow and keep our roads free so that we can get our kids to school in the morning and we can get to work in the morning, those people are out there. They deserve a pension, they deserve competitive wages, that's part of our policy. That is part of our unavoidable expense. Other unavoidable expenses our police officers need vests to get those bullets away from them. Well, guess what? We had a little glitch in our vests, so the manufacturer recalled them and all at once decided we're going to completely take those back. We'll pay for those vests, but now you can no longer stagger purchases because you bought them all at the same time. You can only have them for five years. They're only licensed for five years, so now I have a huge debt in one year that we have to cover. Won't have it again next year, but I'm going to start setting aside money for that. Great business principle. Those are part of our unavoidables. Revenue rejections, people are saving. They're not spending. Great, go city of Colorado Springs. We're family oriented, we can save, we can eat at home, do great things, I love it. Except they're not spending money, our sales tax is going down. Besides, we're a service-based economy, not a goods-based economy. Therefore, our primary source of taxes, which is over 50% of our sources of income that are discretionary for police and fire services, well, guess what? It's not coming in anymore and it's not really projected to come in anymore because we buy our goods where? Internet. 
So being a speedy, efficient economy, buying them over the internet, don't pay sales tax, guess what? We're screwed. Okay. So our gap then is $37.9 million on top of the $41 million we've just handled in the last 18 months. Just some pictures here. Tom covered these. I won't go into them, but just notice the burgundy box. That's our tax rate compared with other Front Range cities' sales tax. And property tax, that's the, the biggie. That's the little one, actually. Now here's the same information that shows property tax and sales tax per capita, which means per 1,000. Great measure, even across the world, easy to measure. You can see here, the trend is going downhill. This one happens to be inflation adjusted. This one shows your comparison with the front range cities. So it also gives you a really interesting picture. Yes, there is, well, no, on this one in this composite, there is no, oh, Centennial, excuse me, full contract city. Centennial is lower than we are in that composite picture. Tells a very important story for us. Sales tax collections, if you look at this one, which this one is not, what, okay, this one is in just, adjusted for, for inflation. But if you look at this one, and you, this one includes that per capita piece of it, we're at $81.6 this year of what we spend, well, what we bring in our revenue to spend, compared to look at 1999. Now, we're all academics here, so we get that, right? That should appall us, surprise us, or shock us. We're a 200 square mile city today. This chart doesn't even include that comparison of how many more extra miles we have to serve compared to 1999. It just shows the per capita piece. This is the most telling chart that I use when I talk with groups right now. The problem that I'm having is, one, people are a little skeptical in our nation right now and a little skeptical in our community. Last year, we cut 200 positions out of the budget. I started with 2,000. Nah, you think not too bad, 200, yeah, we can do with that. We did do with that, but it mostly came off the administrative and support services side, the internal, so once again, we didn't have to cut services to the public. Now the problem I'm having is I can't check data. I don't have checks and balances. I don't have capacity to return calls to citizens. I don't have the capacity to follow up, and I'm getting a barrage of calls daily that are taking thousands and thousands of staff time for Cora, which is our requirement for public records. So I'm shifting those internal resources that are left to help the press write their stories that are always so good to read. Okay, in this particular case, what we're looking at for 2010 is we gutted our administrative folks, our support staff last year, so I took that down to the bare bones. I don't have any more cutting I can do in that particular area. So where is it going to come from? Out of the people that are left, of the 1,800 that are left, 600 are in those areas that are not public safety. Who wants to cut public safety? Anybody here want to cut public safety? We don't want to cut public safety. That's one of our core services to our people. I want to be safe. I want you to be safe. That's my job. That's why I went into this field. But the only place left to cut is in that big box on the right, the, the police and fire side of it. I only have 600 left on the other, and the 600 left on the other actually provide the support to keep police and fire going, like payroll, like HR. It includes my snow plowers, street sweepers, pothole fillers. That's what makes up the 600. So that means you have to shift your impact over to the other side, to the police and fire side. That is the burden of what council must deal with this year. It is not a good set of choices, and I certainly wouldn't want to be in their seats. So when we're looking at what we've done, we have to compound on what we've already done. So we've already made cuts in police and fire in every single area of the city operation. And you can see here, we've already done reductions that are pretty huge in all of our areas. So what we're looking at, 209 million. When I started, we had about $247 million in the general fund. Now, there are other funds, but those are restricted for specific purposes. These are the ones that are used for police officers, firefighters, street sweeping, code enforcement, land use, et cetera. So out of this pie right here, you've seen this one. Tom showed it. We're going to move right on to our expenditure side to show you where our money goes. A newspaper article the other day said, oh my gosh, can you believe that 70-some percent of the city is being used to pay for salaries? It's like, but we're a service organization. Of course we use it for salaries. We don't sell goods. We just sell people working out there. 
So it's going to be the biggest part. And because we're public safety oriented and we've cut all that other stuff out, we're going to be a big chunk of public safety because that was the headlines the very next day. Oh my gosh, do you know how much they spend on public safety? Well, of course, that's all that's left.